Hey everybody, Kyle Sasser here, and it's everyone's favorite time. That's right, market statistics time. Uh, coming to you live from uh, my new studio space here <laughs> in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida, and uh, looking to bring you some market statistics for Pinellas County uh, for March 2021. You might be ask asking yourself, Kyle, why are we looking at March statistics? Uh, we just got through the month of April, and we are already in May. And the answer is, is that it does take a little while for the Pinellas Realtors organization to put these statistics together. Um, on average, um, I don't get these stats until about the 20th of the subsequent month. And we look at the preceding month. Other thing to understand about these statistics is that we do look at year over year, which means that we are comparing March 2021 numbers to March 2020 numbers. And as you might remember, some crazy stuff started happening in 2020. <laughs> some crazy things started happening in March 2020, uh, namely the coronavirus. And that is reflected a little bit in these numbers. Uh, there are a few little glimmers of hope if you have been looking to purchase a house recently, and I will go over those. But yeah, by and large, it is still a very tight market, very limited inventory and rising home prices. So that trend does did continue in March 2021. There's a little bit of relief in a few different sectors, um, but by and large, that trend does continue. Number of closed sales rose 9.7% to 1,342 units. The interesting part to me here is that the total number of homes that were bought with cash is actually up 34.5% to 452. Um, I can tell you, whenever I've been listing things, there have been a lot of very, um, just a lot of cash buyers in the market currently. So the people who have cash, those are typically the ones that have a better chance of having their offer accepted. Now, there's certainly exceptions if the, the cash offer is a little lower or something like that, um, and you are a conventional loan, you still have a pretty good chance of winning that house. But there are a lot of cash buyers there that are willing to pay a premium uh, for the house as well. Median sales price is up 18.5% to $340,000. That, that is a very significant climb in 12 months, uh, nearly 20%. Average sales price is up 32.7% to $483,271. And if you need a little bit of a refresher course, so average, you probably know, you take let's say five houses, add the purchase price together and then divide it by five. That's your average. Medium price is a little different. So let's say that there's 99 houses. Um, the median is going to be the price at which there's the same number higher as there are lower. So a little bit different from an average. Personally, I kind of like the medium price a little bit better just because it removes a lot of the volatility. Um, for example, if some very expensive beach homes sell, that can drag the average. Uh, and uh, conversely, if a lot of you know lower price properties sell, um, that can also dra drag the average down. But the median, the median pretty much hangs out. The median price is quite a bit less volatile. Now, uh, next interesting stat here is going to be the median percent of original list price received. I don't go over this one much just because it doesn't. It normally doesn't have a lot to do with the market in general. So what this is, is basically if there's, an, if there's a house for sale with an asking price, what percentage of the asking price is the winning offer? And that has gone from 97% of the asking price to 100% of the asking price. Um, it's only an increase of 3%, so it's not crazy, but most stuff when it sells nowadays is going at asking price. Median time to contract is down 57% from 21 days to nine days. So that tells us that things are going super duper duper quick. <laughs> um, now, if you're working with a great realtor, uh, <clears throat> uh, there are some methods uh, and techniques that we can use when both looking at homes as well as submitting offers to ensure that you are not just throwing money away on a higher price unnecessarily. Um, if you are in the market for a house, I would recommend reaching out to me uh, and I'll be happy to go over those tools with you. Contact information is down below. Total number of new listings. Um, so this is houses that were newly listed for sale are actually down just a touch. 
uh, to 1,384. So we're, we're kind of maintaining um, overall, we're maintaining at the level that we were last year, um, which is much reduced, <laughs> which is much reduced. So March 2020, that's when we had a little bit of, uh, you know, the stuff with the uh, coronavirus. So now total number of pending homes, which are homes that are under contract already uh, with a purchase contract, is actually up 37.2% to 1,655. But the total number of inventory, check this out, the total active listings is down 65% from 2,530 to 884. That is two-thirds less. We ha we only have a third of the houses that we did this time last year. That is absolute madness. Um, <laughs> so we have a third of the number of homes for sale. We're still selling more homes for more money ever, and we have more under contract. And that is just a recipe for skyrocketing home prices. It's a very simple supply-demand equation. Now, I do like to dive a little bit more into the specific um, information on various price points. Obviously, you know, a, a $10 million house is going to sell in a little bit different time frame than a $200,000 house. One thing I can tell you is that these price point stats are a little deceptive. Um, if you just take them at face value, the thing you have to remember is a lot of houses have slid up into the next price bracket. So last year, a house might have been um, you know, $250,000, now it's slid up into that $300,000 price bracket. Um, it's just the way things go. So total number of closed sales. Um, under 50000 there was none. There were zero houses under $50,000 sold uh, in March 2021. Fifty to $100,000, there were, it was a drop of 63.2% for a total of seven. And this is only single family homes. This isn't covering mobile homes or condos. Um, those are much, much, much different markets. <laughs> um, hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars is down thirty three point nine percent to forty one, and so on and so forth. Two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars is down twenty two point seven percent to one hundred and seventy seven. With those statistics, you can see that everything two hundred and fifty thousand and below, there's a lot less of. Now two hundred fifty and higher. With closed sales, we're seeing more of, and it's not because we built a lot of $250,000 houses. It's because houses that last year were $200,000 are now selling for, you know, 250, 280. So 250 to $300,000, there was 10% more sold, total of 217. 300 to 400,000, there was 25.9% uh, sold for 311 and so on and so forth. So if you're looking at like 250 and under, there is just not a lot of houses um, selling. There's not a lot of houses available in that price range. Median time to contract. Uh, I'm only going to hit some high points because again, this is uh, this metric is only of limited use. It just kind of tells you how fast the market is. So, uh, fifty to hundred thousand dollars. Median time to contract is one day. <laughs> um, hundred to hundred fifty thousand dollars, nine days. Uh, a drop of 52.6%. 300 to $400,000, six days, drop of 70%. And everything is down basically 50 to 60%. Um, the only one that actually you still have a decent amount of time to look at is a million dollars or more. Uh, but even still, that is down 68.2% to 21 days. Number of new listings by uh, purchase price. Again, this one is split um, at that... Eh, 250 to 300 is still down a little bit, but honestly, that's I would say that's the pretty clear dividing line. So, 54% uh, fewer houses listed for sale between 100 and 150 thousand dollars. 52% fewer houses sale um, listed for sale if you're looking between um, that 150 and 200 thousand dollar mark. 32% fewer houses between 200 and 250 thousand for a total of 160. Now, um, 250 and above, so like 250 to $300,000 houses, number of new listings um, only went down 4.5%. 300 to 400 is actually up 24.2% for a total of 349. So that's kind of the new, I mean, we, we heard where the, where the median prices and the average prices are. So you can see that that's basically where the bulk of homes has moved. Um, and the number of New homes for sale for 400 to 600,000 is up 35.9% to 295.
Uh, but then we drop down to the inventory by current list price, and basically um, <laughs> everything is down. So 100 to 150 thousand dollar homes. There was a total of 15 homes for sale, which is a drop of 86.1 percent. That is bonkers. Uh, 150 to 200 thousand dollars is down 71 percent to a total of 65. 200 to 250 thousand dollars is down 72.7 percent to 85. 400 to 600 thousand dollars is down 64 percent to a total of 160. And that is that's just that's just what it is. Um, unfortunately, there's not much to be done about this at this point. Um, I'll give kind of my thoughts on what we're what we're looking at here a little later on. So, <laughs> so stay tuned. But current market conditions current market conditions are it is very very difficult uh, to try to find a house currently. Um, not impossible. Um, I have certainly gotten some contracts together and even negotiated some price reductions off of the purchase price. Um, one of the most recent ones was actually a 4% price reduction, which is relatively unheard of in the current market. So it's doable, uh, but you definitely need somebody who's going to be, you know, going to bat for you. Now, last page here is what I like to call the doom and gloom page. Uh, so this is going to be covering foreclosures, um, real estate owned, short sales, all that good stuff. Now, the thing to know about this is we're still under that moratorium for foreclosures and evictions. So these numbers are still suppressed. Um, there are some folks that think that we're going to see a flood of these come on the market once the, um, once the foreclosure restriction is lifted. And all I can say is we'll see. It would take a significant number of foreclosures to overcome that low of an inventory, like tens of like thousands and thousands of thousands of foreclosures, which I, I'm not going to say is impossible, um, but it's a little, I don't know. But we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. So total number of foreclosures uh, for Pinellas County, March 2021 compared to 2020, uh, was actually down 69.6% uh, from 23 to 7. And the number of short sales was down. Uh, so short sales is when um, a home is sold, and they owe more on the house than the house is worth. So short sales are down 50% from four to two. So going off those numbers, not a lot to be concerned about with the foreclosures, but like I said, we do kind of have that unknown of how many foreclosures are there going to be once the uh, foreclosure moratorium is lifted. So I wanted to come back and visit my daily new listings for both Pinellas and Hillsborough County combined. So I had been tracking this since the start of the pandemic, just so I could have a accurate count of how many new listings are coming online in both counties, because that's going to tell me if there has been any changes in inventory and basically what to expect for the coming weeks. Uh, uh, this is very useful for knowing how to market uh, listings and also how tough you can be in negotiations and just to kind of have a pulse on the market to know what's going on. So we had kind of been lulled in the last few months where things have basically been held steady, but I want to kind of revisit these since it's been a, a couple months since we've taken a look at these. So obviously um, this time last year was when everyone was, you know, locked down and secured on coronavirus. So, you know, restaurants were still closed up and the number of listings plummeted substantially. So what I'm seeing currently is, so this is uh, the number of listings for the last seven days from May 4th through uh, the 28th. So a total of 807 listings were at the same time last year. We had uh, almost 700. So we have 15% more listings now than last year. Um, the last two weeks, about 30%, and then the last 30 days is up about 45%, which sounds great. However, compared to um, two years ago, which is kind of the last normal um, March numbers, um, so actually I could probably take these, actually let me update these. <laughs> so this is literally one year ago, uh, this is two years ago, uh, and this is three years ago because we have rolled into a new year. So compared to the last quote unquote normal year, we can see that we are still down 20%, 14%, 13% for those same time periods. And then compared to three years ago, we're down 20% and then 17%. So 
we are still um, a little behind on number of listings that are coming up for sale. However, there has been, it's not as bad as it has been for the last six months. So this is some good news. So there's, there's more listings coming on the market than uh, there was historically. And another kind of good sign is that we have actually had two, two days here where we have had over 200 new listings pop up on the market. And that, that is something that we have not had in a very long time. So that is definitely some good news, especially if you are in the market to buy. So there's going to be a little bit more to choose from than there has been. Now, that said, it's going to take quite some time for the for these additional listings to kind of overwhelm the inventory deficit that we have. So don't expect any instant changes here. This is going to take quite some time to make a dent in things. But it's something I'm going to be keeping an eye on because if this trend continues then you know prices should relax here a little bit and again this is important to know both on the listing side and the buyers side so overall what are we looking at here well it's going to be continued high prices if you're looking to buy it's definitely going to be tricky not impossible because like i said i have successfully negotiated contracts and i've also negotiated significant price reductions a lot of it is very dependent on the house itself. Um, it, it, it can be trickier if you're doing specialized loan products like FHA or VA loan. Um, those especially can be tricky, but there are ways that we can structure and uh, submit those so that they have a better chance of being accepted. But it's just, uh, you know, it, unless you're looking at like like 300,000 and above things get a little easier if the house is 100% ready to go fully renovated move in ready there's going to be a lot of competition on it if you're open to maybe doing a little work you're probably going to have a little bit easier time of things so what like what's going to break this that's that's what everyone keeps asking me like what's like what's the coming change going to be as i mentioned on the doom and gloom page a lot of people think it's going to be the foreclosures um, that's going to take a very long time to work itself out. What I think the major change is going to come from is um, vaccinations reaching widespread adoption, which, uh, you know, we're, we're doing pretty good on that so far. Vaccinations reaching widespread adoption, which um, causes everyone to relax and feel a little bit more comfortable. So the folks that decided not to sell their house and to kind of hunker down whenever coronavirus started, they're going to come back to the market and be like, okay, you know, we feel a little bit more comfortable letting people in our house for showings and let's see about getting this house sold. Um, the number of those folks I feel is going to be significantly higher than the number of foreclosures. Um, because in my daily tracking of the number of listings, I like, I literally saw within a week, the number of listings basically just cut cut in half to 60 percent <laughs> and those people never really came back uh to the market uh, like a little bit we've I, I would say maybe from the numbers i've seen like we're, we're actually doing pretty decent numbers now on our daily listings we're still down compared to 2019 which is like the last normal year so um but it's a question of when those people feel comfortable so it's it's kind of a fix the pandemic problem and the inventory problem will probably solve itself. So if you haven't gotten vaccinated yet, you know, maybe make an appointment to go get that done, you know, <laughs> pitch in a little bit. Um, I got my second dose a couple weeks ago. Um, wasn't too bad, to be honest. <laughs> so I just, I slept a lot the next day. So, but, um, but to me, that's kind of the overarching thing with uh, the market here. So anyway, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Kyle Sasser. I'm a realtor with Keller Williams St. Petersburg. Uh, this is a uh, this is Great Homes Tampa Bay. Uh, be sure to, to subscribe to this wherever you're listening to it at. Um, I do go over market statistics as well as other interesting videos uh, concerning real estate, ways to uh, you know help your house value, um, and just answer generalized questions. So be sure to check out the channel, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you soon.